Hey guys, um, in this video today I'll be going through some projectile motion for AS Physics. If you study maths and study mechanics, you may also find this video very useful. Now when I teach projectile motion, I usually teach this recipe here, which consists of three steps. Okay, um, I've got an example here, which I um, will go through using this recipe, so you understand each step fully. Um, the example here, I have a particle at starting at point A. It's thrown vertically, or it's thrown up in the air, with an initial velocity of 5 meters per second at an angle of 25 degrees. Um, it lands at point B, and we're trying to calculate the horizontal displacement traveled by this particle. So, let's begin with step one. Step one is basically to define your coordinate system. This is arbitrary, so we just can say up is positive, and I'll say right is positive. Okay, so it's simple as that, step one, step one is done. Step two is basically to define your horizontal and vertical variables. We should always remember that when dealing with projectile motion, um, horizontal motion and vertical motion should be treated independently. So what I'll do here is I'll draw a table um, with one column as horizontal, the other as vertical. Okay, so the first thing we can note down is the horizontal initial velocity which is u is equal to 5 cos 25, okay? The, since there's no external force um, when the particle is in free motion, we know that the acceleration horizontally is equal to zero. Looking at equation one over here on the right-hand side, this means that since a is equal to zero, we can say v is equal to u. Looking at equation two, we can say the horizontal displacement is equal to ut. Okay, so that's basically the horizontal variables defined. We then need to do the same for the vertical. So the vertical velocity is um, initial velocity is equal to 5 sine 25 in this case. Um, since we've taken up as positive, gravity acts downwards, and since the particle is in free motion, its acceleration will be due to gravity. And since it acts downwards and we've taken up as positive, A would be equal to minus 9.81. Um, this means, um, in actual fact, since we haven't got any zeros here, like we did here with the horizontal, equation 1 would remain the same, and equation 2 would also remain the same. Okay? Um, in terms of the vertical displacement, S in this case is 0. This is because displacement is defined as the distance from the point where you finish to the point where you start. Um, we started at point A and we finished at point B. We finished on the same plane, so we've had no vertical displacement. If I finished here, then this would be the vertical displacement. But I've not finished there, I finished on the same plane as A. So A is here and I've finished exactly on the same plane as A. So there's no vertical displacement, so S vertically is equal to zero. Okay, so that is basically step two, done and dusted, so I can put a cross through that. And we move on to step three, which is basically solve the problem. So, step three. We're trying to work out the horizontal displacement, which is defined, we know, in this left-hand column as S is equal to UT. Okay, so we know the initial horizontal velocity, um, but we don't know the time. So how do we work out time? Remember that time is not defined horizontally or vertically. Time is just time. It's the same horizontally and it's the same vertically. Okay, so we know now we need to work out time. So we can use this formula here. We know S is equal to UT plus one half AT squared to work out time. So using the vertical variables, we can say we know S is equal to zero. So if we put a zero here. We know the initial vertical velocity is equal to 5 sine 25 multiplied by t, and then it's minus a half times by 9.81. It's minus since a is equal to minus 9.81, and we multiply that by t squared. We can see here we can take out t as a factor, so we can say t 5 sine 25 minus 4.91 t squared. Okay, so we know that t can either be equal to zero, which is when the motion starts, that's when the displacement of is also equal to zero, the vertical displacement, 
or t is equal to 5 sine 25 divided by 4.91, which I calculated to be um, 1.95 seconds. No, sorry, 0 0.43 seconds. Okay, so that's the time taken for the particle to go from A to point B. Now we know the time, we can just substitute it into this S equals UT. So U is equal to horizontally 5 cos 25 multiplied by time, which is equal to 0 0.43. And from that, we get a horizontal displacement of 1.95 meters. Okay, so that's how you basically kind of go through this recipe of working your way through this example. Um, the best way to kind of practice this is just to kind of do as many questions as you can and get this kind of recipe in your head if you can. Um, people who don't use this kind of step-by-step -step, um, recipe method, um, they tend to get confused, um, mix up u with vertical, they forget that s equals ut, by putting, breaking this question down into little steps, um, you'll get most of the method marks as it is. And if you get enough practice, you'll be able to get the answer. It just kind of gives a bit more foundation to your working out. So you don't get as confused as if you didn't um, have these steps written out. So please do practice. Um, post your comments if you want any improvements on the videos. Um, I hope this video does help. So have a nice day. Take care. Good luck and goodbye.